Make one more. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there we go. Good boy, Casper. Now that strike from the water's edge, that goes is good. From the tip of the nose to the base of the tail, with a fit to the base of the tail, one quick feet is out and covers a good amount of distance. And he moved forward pretty well then, but we'll see if we can't get him excited and get another good strike out of him. Nero, do you want to jump back in? Right, yeah, I'll see what happens. So straight away I'll pull back into the water. He's straight into it. So he's going to cruise back in. What he'll probably do is go back under. Once he gets back in the water, he'll go straight back under the water and sort of enter back into that hunter's door post. He hopes that once he goes under, that this is dark, dirty, murky water and he hopes we can't see him. So he wants us to stay in that wrong position for as long as possible. So the same thing in the wild, he'll be waiting for that animal, like a kangaroo or a feral pig. It's down next to the water's edge, you know, they're down there, having a bit of a drink, trying to either cross the river or, or take a bit of a drink next to the water's edge. And he cruises over, and he's waiting for the animal to stay in that ultimate position. He wants to make sure that they're there in his strike range. So he has that best chance Setting up like he is right now, so he's pulling his legs forward. Nothing for him. He's hunting through those vibrations of my foot tapping on the ground. And if you watch his tail, he's got a bit of a kick right at the end. So he's building up all his power. He's pretty much all muscle. So he will just build up all that power in his legs and his tail. And he will wait for the animal to come down to the water's edge and stick their nose in the water right in front of him. So he knows he has that best chance of striking out and grabbing the animal, ideally on the head. So you can imagine, even like a feral pig who has this close-knit bone, he relies on the animal to come down, take a drink of water, he bites it on the head, he will literally crush his head down to a couple of inches thick straight away. So it means that he can kill the animal on impact pretty much and take it back to the water. He's not worried about getting kicked in the head by the pigs or even something bigger like a sort of muck or a cow. He knows he can take it out straight away, strike out, grab it, pull it back into the water. If, say, he misses it on the head and he grabs it on one of the front legs or something like that, then we're not, not going to kill it by grab it on the front leg. So what he'll do is he will then drag it back into the water and he'll do what we call the death roll. So he will roll on his axis Disorientate the animal. You should probably just get closer. <laughs> Literally, at this time, he's closer. He can strike out and he can pick his beats in one go. So, never feel too comfortable or confident. And the thing about passes is he sort of knows he's the life, he knows on the outer. So, he will do whatever he wants. So, most crocodiles will come over, they'll steam out, they do a strike, and throw some food in his mouth, and it's all over. It makes it a lot safer for us. But for Casper, he sort of tries to work out what's going on. Crocodiles have a frontal lobe in the brain, so they can literally learn and remember patterns of behavior. So, Casper has learned and remembered our patterns, our behaviors, how he's supposed to do this demonstration. So, he's like, if I do something a little bit different, he might get a little bit closer, he might get the water again for too long. I've got a much better chance of setting it over the little chicken in his head. We have a bigger chicken behind it. Right here, so bring it back. Try and get him to strike out. Smart, 
and uh, they'll do the least amount of effort to the most amount of reward. And that's probably why they're so successful. And keep in mind, he doesn't have to eat very often. He can go weeks, even months without any tucker. In his current condition, probably six months without something to eat. We'll see if we can't get him to put on a bit of a strike here. And you know, one, one that was brilliant, mate. I hope they got it on camera. <laughs> Now, uh, this isn't a trick we've had to teach Casper or any of the crops here. This is a natural behaviour, something they use when they're in the wild. And they're so little when they hatch, you know, they're not even the size of that snag. They're 15 centimetres long, they weigh 30 grams, and at that size, pretty much everything else eats baby crocodiles. So they hide in the reeds, and they use the tailwalk method to stay hidden, but also catch themselves up there. Frogs, insects, spiders, you name it, anything like that. But they'll use it from Casper's size and even larger where they start to target bigger prey items, obviously. Magpie geese, snakes, they love flying foxes. And anywhere you've ever been where there's a flying fox roost, you can smell it a mile away. Croc sensor smell is fantastic. They'll start to hone in on where that is. And then they'll start to take note of the subordinate flying foxes, the ones that have to hang out at the very bottom of the branch. And then they'll just sit and wait. Like I said, if he doesn't have to eat every week, he's got time on his side. He'll wait for the flying foxes to roost and then he'll put on a big strike. And he's not demonstrating it great today. He's probably hoping that someone with longer arms would actually hang over. Shortest guy in the department. Nero, can you grab my feet? No, don't do that. Actually, do we have a big bit of food? Not really. <laughs> See if we can't get it. Come on, Casper. So like Nero was saying earlier, incredibly intelligent, they can learn and remember. And that way that they pick up on our behaviour here is exactly the way that hunt the wild combat. So he'll look up, plant his feet on the bottom if he can reach it, get a kick in his tail, and then they can propel themselves straight up. Nice work, mate. Oh, that good work, <laughs> good work Casper. Yeah, you can give it up for him. He's an absolute weapon. Yeah. Good boy. Nice catch, mate. Nice catch. So, guys, the main lesson here is if you are up in northern Australia, it might look like a good place to flick a little or read a book, but anywhere overlying the water is not a good idea. Right, we're trying to get him out one more time over here. Come here, boy. We want to put it to the test and see how fast a crocodile can run. So, we hear it all the time. People say crocs can run as fast as a horse. They can chase you down. We're definitely out your land cruiser. Put it to the test and see how far we can crop on hard solid ground. Here you go. Come on, man. He is being weird today, man. Super sus. Right, yeah, so reset it. Good thing for me is Jimmy's got short legs, so I can run a lot faster than Jimmy. So let's go south. I'm safe. He's showing it perfectly right now. Now he just doesn't want to come out any further. Even though I'm right in front of him, I've got a fish dangle in his face. He's done his strike, that's his strike distance right there. Tip his nose, base of his tail. He's done all he can do that's fast. If he came any further out, I could easily walk back as fast as he can come forward. That's nothing, that's not diamond anything special. It's just because he's a diamond for being fast. In there, in the water, not out here on land. Yeah, that's <laughs> Give it up for my last time. <laughs> <laughs> 